represent more than a half of the population in Africa, even in the world. But because of cultural beliefs and other stereotypes, they played a little role in public affairs for years. And this was the case in many African countries, even beyond Africa. They have been denied their fundamental rights as human beings. Today, although a lot has been achieved in promoting gender equality, there are still obstacles to get tangible results. This special meeting gives a good opportunity to reflect on those obstacles and challenges which impede on the participation of women in the political, economic, and social life of our respective countries. I highly appreciate the theme of this year meeting, Women in Elections, which is of great importance as far as women in decision-making position is concerned. In different countries, it remains a big issue to address. But with commitment and courage to challenge the existing norms and rules, we can make, we can make the status of women better than it is today. Therefore, let us continue to work together. Let us build and strengthen networks, partnership, and alliances. Let us communicate properly and learn lessons from each other for the benefit of the welfare of the citizens of Africa, particularly vulnerable women and children. Once again, I wish you a pleasant stay in Rwanda and have fruitful deliberations in this particular meeting reserved to women. Thank you for your kind attention. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker, for your speech. Now, I would like to invite Madame la vice-présidente du comité des femmes parlementaires de l'UPA pour prononcer son discours. S'il vous plaît, madame, le micro est à vous. Distingués invités, mesdames et messieurs, il m'est particulièrement agréable de prendre la parole devant cette auguste assemblée au nom du comité des femmes parlementaires de l'UPA. Permettez-moi tout d'abord de remercier les autorités et le peuple rwandais et plus particulièrement Madame la Présidente du Parlement rwandais ainsi que les femmes parlementaires rwandaises pour toutes les marques d'attention et de sympathie à l'endroit de toutes les délégations venant des pays africains membres de l'UPA. Mesdames et Messieurs, Mesdames les Présidentes des Chambres et des Sénats, Honorables députés, au cours du siècle dernier, les femmes ont lutté pour obtenir le droit de voter et celui d'être élues. Cela ne leur est plus contesté aujourd'hui grâce à une prise de conscience des sociétés et des exigences des organismes internationaux. En effet, la présence des femmes au sein des parlements et autres assemblées élues est une composante essentielle de la démocratie. L'augmentation du pourcentage des femmes exerçant des fonctions électives va efficacement dans le sens d'une évolution sociale et démocratique qui ne peut que profiter à la société. À cet égard, les États africains ont donc le devoir de faire en sorte qu'il soit donné aux femmes une vraie chance d'élire librement 
le candidat de leur choix comme de se faire élire elles-mêmes. Ainsi, dans la plupart des pays africains, des dispositions législatives ont été mises en place visant à promouvoir des actions positives en faveur de l'accroissement de la présence des femmes au Parlement et, des, et dans les organismes gouvernementaux nationaux et internationaux. Mais il reste encore beaucoup à faire pour, les pour que ces actions soient traduites et que ce soit des actions concrètes. Et cela ne peut, ce, ne peut être effectif que par un renforcement plus actif du réseau des femmes parlementaires d'Afrique. Mesdames les présidents des chambres et sénats, honorables députés, mesdames et messieurs, c'est en ce sens que trouve toute son importance le thème inscrit à l'ordre du jour de la réunion du comité des femmes parlementaires de l'OPA d'aujourd'hui, à savoir la mise en œuvre des stratégies visant à soutenir les femmes candidates aux élections législatives et locales. Il nous, il nous faut ouvrir inlassablement pour une plus grande pré-représentation des femmes au sein des parlements et des autres assemblées élues. En cela, l'exemple du Rwanda, dont nous pouvons être fiers, doit nous inspirer. Car le Parlement du Rwanda compte aujourd'hui 56% des femmes et la, présidente, et la présidence de la Chambre des députés est assurée par une femme, notre sœur ici présente, Son Excellence Rose Mukantabana. Ce même, même exemple est valable pour le Zimbabwe. Dans la présence d'une femme présidente du Sénat, en la personne ici présente, de notre vice-président du comité exécutif de l'UPA. Merci de nous indiquer la voie à suivre. Merci, Mesdames les Présidentes, pour votre exemple. Nos actions doivent, à mon sens, s'étendre à tous les secteurs de la vie publique, en particulier au sein de nos formations politiques qui doivent adopter des mesures positives pour mettre en œuvre des stratégies visant à croître la proportion des femmes candidates aux différentes élections à l'échelle locale et nationale. Nous devons œuvrer à la mise en application par les États africains ayant adhéré aux, aux législations internationales des droits de l'homme et à la Convention des Nations Unies sur l'élimination de toute forme de discrimination à l'égard des femmes. Des dispositions prises en matière des droits de l'homme et qui définissent les normes internationales de la participation des femmes au processus électoral. Ces actions devront être soutenues par une couverture médiatique impartiale par des journalistes formés à cet exercice, particulièrement dans les zones rurales où les femmes rencontrent le plus de difficultés à toucher l'élection. Pour que les femmes prennent conscience que sans leur soutien aux femmes, les objectifs de cette réunion ne seront pas atteints. Nous savons tous aujourd'hui que l'échec des femmes lors des élections, ça vient du fait des propres femmes qui ne votent pas les femmes en préférant voter les hommes. Ce sont là quelques pistes de réflexion qui pourraient guider nos actions pour une participation pleine et entière à la vie nationale de nos pays respectifs. Je voudrais, pour terminer, exprimer ma gratitude à toutes les femmes parlementaires et à tous nos invités qui prennent part à la réunion du comité des femmes parlementaires de l'OPA en leur encourageant d'apporter leur contribution à la mise en œuvre des stratégies pour accroître la présence des femmes dans, dans les parlements et assemblées et les sénats, ce qui pourrait énormément favoriser que toute initiative législative arrivant au, au Parlement et au Sénat en matière des droits des femmes puisse être votée. 
adopter et appliquer. Nous avons la cour de la famille, les droits sur le divorce, etc. etc. Aujourd'hui, il y a beaucoup de, de pays d'Afrique qui n'arrivent pas à mettre en place ces, 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 ces lois parce qu'il n'y a pas une présence euh, euh, majoritaire des femmes au Parlement. Ainsi va sur les lois sur la violence et toutes sortes de violences à l'égard des femmes qui ne peuvent pas être votées parce qu'il n'y a pas assez de présence dans les parlements et les sénats des femmes. Nous remercions également le groupe national rwandais et les femmes parlementaires rwandaises pour toutes les dispositions prises pour la tenue de la réunion du comité à Kigali. En souhaitant plein succès à nos travaux, je vous remercie de votre bienveillance attention et de, en déclarant ouverte la réunion du comité des femmes parlementaires de l'UPAIA du 28 novembre 2012 à Kigali. Que vive l'Union africaine, que vive l'UPA, que vive la femme africaine. Merci. Maintenant, c'est l'ouverture solennelle de la 35e conférence de l'Union parlementaire africaine. Elle va et commencer par la locution de bienvenue qui sera présentée par Madame la Présidente de la Chambre des députés du Rwanda. Elle sera suivie par une autre allocution prononcée par Madame la Présidente du Comité exécutif de l'Union parlementaire africaine et elle sera clôturée par le discours d'invité d'honneur qui nous sera adressé par Son Excellence et Monsieur le Président du Sénat du Rwanda, qui, comme je l'ai dit, représente Son Excellence le Président de la République. Cela sera clôturé par une photo de souvenir où toutes les délégations seront invitées à se rendre à l'extérieur pour la prise de photo. Et sans tarder, j'invite Son Excellence et Madame la Présidente de la Chambre des députés du Rwanda et qui est en même temps présidente de cette conférence de venir vous adressez le mot de bienvenue. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Parliament of Rwanda and on my own behalf, I want to express once again our sincere gratitude to APU, APU members for having selected our country, Rwanda, to host this year conference, which follows the other two meetings, namely the 61st Executive Committee and the Women Committee meetings. Allow me to tell you, distinguished delegates, that you are very happy to be with you during this week. And we do hope your stay in Rwanda is still as pleasant as we may wish. The fact that you accepted to travel from your respective countries to Chigari is a clear indication of brotherhood relationships and genuine cooperation between your countries and Rwanda and between your parliament and the parliament of Rwanda. I would like to assure you that we will spare no effort to make you feel at home. Excellency speakers, honorable delegates, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, to have a forum like APU is an important step in building and strengthening friendship and partnership between people. We live in a globalized world and it is no longer possible to avoid such kind of collaboration. This year conference will be held under two main themes. The strengthening of democratic governance in, Africa, in African countries as a necessity for political, economic, and social stability. And the other one is the role of parliaments 
in implementation of the strategies of the poverty reduction. I do appreciate the choice of such themes, which are very important in terms of promoting the principles of democratic societies, rule of law, accelerating economic development towards the welfare of the citizens. We all know that good governance is a key pillar to peace, to security, to human rights promotion, and economic growth. On the other hand, bad governance leads to conflicts, tensions, and the slowdown of the economy. I have no doubt that during this conference, we will benefit from experiences of each other to better play our role as legislators. In fact, parliamentary diplomacy, cooperation, and institutional capacity building must be at the top of the agenda of regional forums like APU. I hope that the conclusions and recommendations that will emerge from this conference will fit within the genuine and effective contribution of APU towards finding solutions to the various ills that are currently plaguing Africa continent. To conclude, allow me to reiterate our sincere thanks to the Executive Committee of APU, all members and the whole team of the Secretariat to trust our country, Rwanda, and our parliament by accepting to host this conference here in Chigari in the building of the Rwandan parliament. Thank you for your kind attention and may God bless you all and what you are doing to do in this conference. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to welcome you all to the opening ceremony of the 35th Conference of the African Parliamentary Union. Honorable President of the Senate of Rwanda, please accept my greetings and convey our deep gratitude to His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Rwanda, for agreeing for agreeing to host this meeting in this beautiful, lush city of Kigali. Please also convey to him our admiration of the dynamic and able manner in which he is steering the national reconciliation peace process to ensure stability for the economic and social development of Rwanda. In accepting the invitation of the Parliament of Rwanda to meet here in Kigali, African parliaments have demonstrated their solidarity with the people of this country who have suffered so much from war and who today are clearly showing their willingness to live in peace, security, understanding, and good neighborliness. On behalf of the APU, and indeed on my own behalf, I wish to sincerely thank Honorable Rose Mkandabana, Speaker of the Chamber of Deputies, and Honorable Dr. Jean Damasan Ntaokulir Yayo, President of the Senate, for having afforded us this opportunity. We 
would also like to pay tribute to the authorities and people of Rwanda for the warm and fraternal welcome shown to all delegations. The generous hospitality and the facilities provided by the Parliament of Rwanda have made the working conditions very ideal for us all. Our thanks also go to representatives of regional and international organizations taking part in these meetings. We wish to assure them that the APU is ready to foster, strengthen, fruitful ties of collaboration and cooperation with them. The media is also to be commended for transmitting this meeting on the concerns and aspirations of parliaments to the citizens, thereby fostering a much needed culture of participatory democracy. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, even as we are meeting here, some African countries are facing strife that threatens to halt their economic and social development efforts. These crises are really a challenge to governance. That is why we are calling for the use of dialogue and compromise in seeking solutions to problems. This is the only way to restore peace prior to any developmental action. The 35th conference is very important as topics that address our common aspirations to, ins to institutionalize democratic governance with a view to reducing poverty and promoting economic and social development in Africa will be under consideration. These are, and I quote, strengthening democratic governance in African countries to achieve political, economic, and social ability, end of quote, and, quote, the, rule of parliament, the role of parliaments in implementing poverty reduction strategies, end of quote. Also, the Committee of Women Parliamentarians of APU addressed the issue of, quote, implementing strategies aimed at supporting women candidates at legislative and local government elections, end of quote. This affirms the position of APU on the cause of women and in their participation in politics. The interrelationship between democratic governance and poverty reduction cannot be overemphasized. Indeed, according to the Secretary General of the United Nations, I quote, the appeal of democracy stems in part from its association with the advancement of the quality of life for all human beings, and thus with the work to reach the Millennium Development Goals, end of quote. As African people, it is clear that democratic governance is meaningful only when translated concretely into development in education, health, environment, and living standards. These issues should guide member parliaments of APU as we draw up policies to strengthen democratic governance in our, in our countries, bearing in mind that the quality of governance is increasingly becoming crucial for sustainable human development in Africa. When an, a country improves transparency in rights-based public affairs management, involves other stakeholders, and implements rules and policies in a transparent and equitable manner, 
In a climate of peace and stability, it creates trust and attracts more investments for growth and poverty reduction. In this respect, the principle of free and fair elections is key to democratic governance. We are proud to say our host, Rwanda, is leading the way in Africa and even in the whole world. With 56% of women representation in parliament, and the Chamber of Deputies being headed by a woman. Our congratulations indeed go to Madam Speaker and to the people of Rwanda for this accomplishment. The seventh African Economic Forum held from the 30th to the 2nd of November in 2012 here in Kigali reiterated Africa's strong growth over the last decade, notwithstanding the international economic crisis. This relatively bright picture should not make us lose sight of the many challenges ahead, as the continent still has to translate this growth into poverty reduction and sustainable human development through job creation, good quality social services, and more opportunities for citizens. Democratic governance entails strong, accountable, and transparent institutions based on the rule of law and backed by, a, by an accountable executive, an efficient legislature, an independent and impartial judiciary, and a capable and inclusive public administration, as well as an informed, empowered, and politically active civil society. All these phenomena speak to our conscience and raise the urgent need to correct the flaws in our political systems so as to make new democratic strides this is the very essence of our meeting here in Kigali. In this respect, we must bear in mind United, the United Nations General Assembly Resolution 62-7, which states, I quote, while democracies share common features, there is no single model of democracy and that democracy does not belong to any one country or region." End of quote. Changes and reforms undertaken to enhance government must, as much as possible, include the local philosophies, norms and practices that promote ownership by the people. While best practices have been identified, every African country must, for instance, identify components and mechanisms tailored to their own specific circumstances and capacities to enable them to achieve the same objectives as other countries of the continent in the area of democratic governance. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, we must take the opportunity at this meeting to deeply and critically address the various aspects of democratic governance, to come out with proposals and recommendations to help our countries fight poverty, unemployment, corruption, injustice, and inequalities. Our proposals and recommendations should focus on the need to build the capacities of parliaments and parliamentarians alike, so as to enable them to fulfill 
their role as legislators and their role of oversight of the executive, especially in budget matters and official development aid. Since its inception in 1976, our union has strongly supported African causes and fostered noble democratic peace and development values. Also, the development of parliamentary democracy has raised parliaments and parliamentarians to the level of regional, continental, and international actors. APU will thus continue to be the voice of the African people in international parliamentary organizations to foster their aspirations in social welfare and economic progress. Let us continue to work together to make the union a forum for dialogue and parliamentary debate, a melting of African parliaments and parliamentarians formulating their common positions to promote the ideals of peace, democracy, freedom, equality, justice, dignity, and social progress for all Africans to further the goals of the African Union and the international community. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, lastly, I once again wish to express our sincere gratitude to His Excellency, the President of the Republic, the government, the parliamentary authorities, and the people of Rwanda for agreeing to host our annual conference as well as for the excellent working conditions provided us. Distinguished parliamentarians, I would like to thank you for your presence and wish you fruitful deliberations. May your proceedings lead to the adoption and resolutions that bring about peace, political, economic, and social stability in our African countries. I thank you. Distinguished invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, it is an honor and a privilege for me to represent His Excellency Paul Kagame, President of the Republic of Rwanda, who wished to be here with you, but could not make it due to his different demanding duties. He, however, asked me to convey to all of you his warm greetings and welcome to Rwanda. <laughs> on behalf of the Parliament of Rwanda and on my own, I once again wish to express our honor and pleasure to host a such a special gathering of African lawmakers. And uh, I will join my voice to the one of uh, the Honorable Speaker Rose Mukanabana to welcome you all here, dear guests in Rwanda, and thank you so much for having traveled miles and miles to come to Chigali to attend this conference. Madam Chairperson of the Executive Committee, I wish you also to thank the APU for, have, for having chosen Rwanda to host the 61 meeting of the Executive Committee which closed on Tuesday and the 35th speakers meeting at the grid coordination of 